Welcome back everyone to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Book 11. Right now, we are currently at war with the Central Siberian Republic. We've got a few things to talk about, but Spring Ra Rasputitsa. The signs have all arrived. The drip, drip, drip of water from the saves of roofs or eaves of roofs have ceased, for there's no more snow for the morning sun to melt. Exaltation is no longer no longer produces a cloud of mist. The forests have gone from silent to alive with the chirping of birds and the rustling of budding leaves. The ground is no longer blanketed in white, but covered with green and brown and the myriad colors of wildflowers. Fields once grazed by the occasional elk now played home to herds of sheep and cattle. The farmers were no longer holed up in their homesteads, but were not plowing and tilling their fields. And as the world came back to life, so did the royal army of the Tsar Rurik. Parade grounds were once again swarming with men. Firing rangers crackled as they had months prior. Cadets ran through obstacle courses, driven hard by generals. To make sure that their men's skills are not deteriorated over the winter. And in the command tents, generals unfold maps and diagrams they had spent months planning. During the winter, they were patient. And during the spring, they will strike. Always go to winter coats and come out... Away go to the winter coats and come out the drums of war. Which, actually, uh, we ended yesterday, like, trying to raid these guys. And we were doing okay. We weren't doing great. But then, all of a sudden, the, C the CSR, the Central Siberian Republic, literally just went to war with us. Like, we didn't get anything regarding... Like a, a warning or anything like that. So he literally just went to war with us. I didn't get any sort of uh, warning up here at all. So I'm like, wow, this kind of sucks. Progress from safety, I guess. I, I don't know how he did it, but as you can see, I've already lost one tile here. So it is what it is, but how will we do the next focus as well? Raise the Shield Maidens. Having our... Having made our ambitions of original unification clear, Princess Lydia has come to the king with an idea. The formation of a sh unit of shield maidens. These elite warrior women will be, Lydia argues, invaluable in impending battles that will face the kingdom. No, furthermore, such a skilled force will be considerably loyal to King Rurik and Princess Lydia. In fact, leaving such experienced and adept soldiers to work on the home front would be nothing more than an immense waste. His Highness is convinced, and so we shall start incorporating the shield maidens into our great army. We will certainly need them. So... A couple comments to go through, which I want to talk about the first one here. Uh, someone recommended that uh, there's support for both sides, really, for us to choose either the Prince Yuri or Princess Lydia. And overall, like I said in the first episode, we're going to go with Lydia for this campaign. I will play Rook again eventually, probably, and do Prince Yuri. But uh, uh, there's one comment that I really, really like that really confirmed to me what we should do and who we should play with, because we should go for Lydia, Princess Lydia, because we can simp to her or simp for her so I thought that was just just like probably one of the best comments from the last video so I really enjoyed that comment quite a bit but regardless other comments include don't worry about the workers with their discontent whip them as hard as you can and just keep whipping and whipping whipping them away because the revolt they have is pretty easy to get rid of so as some of you guys recommended I guess I'm just gonna whip the workers until they are pissed off cool and we might want to keep some um uh, Political power, just in case for, uh, well, coring the CSR, because there's a lot of land here. So, let's see. And other comments, yeah. I mean, honestly, like I said, there's there's support for me to go with either uh, sibling, either with Lydia or Prince Yuri, so it is what it is. I'm, I'm really open to both, but I think for this campaign, Lydia would be probably the best choice. Uh, we have six divisions. We're... Oh, you're still moving up. Okay. Hopefully no one else goes to war with us. That'd be pretty bad if they, uh, they did. Um, I actually, I deployed these soldiers early, so that's why we don't have that many soldiers with us. Actually, do we have any extra spare equipment or lying around? No, we don't. Oh, that's not good. Because I do want to attack here, maybe. Can we actually attack here and do well, maybe? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm glad I... Actually, I'm really glad I deployed these soldiers early, just in case. Uh, help them out. Or just go up there and beat them up if you can. That'd be pretty nice if we could. Go up there, too. Thank you. Now, they really want to hit us hard here, huh? Go suck on my infantry. Is that the Prime Minister, dude? Cool. Good job, guys. And can we do that? Not yet. That's fine. Oh, consumer goods. Nice. Because now we are currently at what? Minus 47% consumer goods, not enough to shield maidens. King Rurik looked over the courtyard from the front of his palace. Just before him, over a thousand women stood at attention. These were just the first recruits of the newly formed shield maidens. These shield maidens were to be led by one Anna Kostur, a Ukrainian nationalist who had been transported between various gulags before ending up near Kemerovo. 
She'd been selected by Princess Lydia to lead the shield maidens, and both Anna and Lydia stood next to the King Rurik in front of the palace doors. Anna Kotsur gave a speech thanking King Rurik for the opportunity to lead these brave women into battle. Her Russian had a notable Ukrainian accent, and King Rurik admittedly didn't catch every word she said. Nevertheless, her speech resonated with her troops who applauded as King Rurik appointed her officially to the rank of general. After she concluded her speech, Princess Lydia gave a speech of her own. The shield maidens had originally been her idea, and she gave a passionate speech about how the bravest soldiers in the realm will now finally have their chance to display the bravery upon the battlefield. Once she concluded, King Rurik stepped forward. He thanked the shield maidens for choosing to serve their king in the most honorable fashion. No longer would the realm deprive women of their chance to fight the enemies of the king upon the grand battlefield that Russia had become. With that said, King Rurik concluded his speech and called for a 21-gun salute. The last gun signaled the end of the ceremony, and Anna Kotsura led the troops out of the courtyard. Glory to the shield maidens. Maiden. Very nice. And I suppose these are elite infantry. As cool as elite infantry are, I'm just probably going to convert them anyways, but... It'll be alright. Cool. Infrastructure, that's alright and all. We can kind of wait for that. Cool. Get our guys a little bit more prepared, and then we're going to start to be thinking about encirclements. Oh, good. They're not... Oh, Nova Spirits is taking those guys. Uh, actually, once we take these guys and integrate them, that won't be too... That'll actually be pretty, 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 pretty darn good for us, actually. Um, realistically, we probably need to attack Yugra next, realistically, so... Can you guys actually go that way? You can, so that's good to know. You guys might as well start expanding, expanding up that way a little bit more. Because I'd like to go over here and come over here or over here and circle these guys like that. Because we will get Tomsk and cut them off. Nice. So far, not bad. 2,000 versus 6,000. Not too bad. Not too bad. If that's the case, we might want to make a break for this. I'm going to circle this division first. Oh. Kit uh, Kachorn, elected Prime Minister. Cool. Uh, you guys go up that way. That's fine. Help him out. Help him out. Good, 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 good. No, sir. No, sir. Not today. No, sir. They don't have that much organization, but then again, neither do we. Come on. Stop. 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 Stop attacking us. God dang it. I hate you guys so much. Um, I'm going to put you up here, then. You guys just hold for now. And you're just going to go up here and win around. Just, Just win. All you have to do is win. Two divisions will win over here. That'll be good. And circle and destroy, and then we can push out this way, too. That'll be nice. There you go. Come on. Why are you taking so long? Seriously, why are you taking so long? Um, we gotta keep these guys in place, maybe. That'd be fine. That's really risky. That's incredibly risky. Uh, you guys begin... No! What the heck? No! Support the attack over there! I did not select you. I know it for a fact I didn't select you. Oh, that's not good. Go, 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 go. Oh, improved infantry rifles are nice. How about some more of that? That'd be pretty good. Just go and switch this out. I don't really care. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Move, 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 move. Oh, we got him. We got him, sons. We got one. Cool. Go straight for Tomsk. You're going to go straight around and circle those guys. Nice. Very nice. Good. Nope. 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 And what you're going to do next is you're going to go here to there to there. Keep encircling. Keep doing that encirclement. No! Come on, you could have encircled them. You could have encircled them. You could have moved faster than that. I know you could have moved faster than that. Just go. Everyone just go ahead. Kill them all off if you can. Then again, it would help if I give you orders to go. But let's go. Go, 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 go. If they're alive, that means they shouldn't be. But it's too bad that we have to kill off, uh, you know, Shostakovich. They have no manpower, though, so they're pretty much done. Whew. All right. Uh, you know, nope. They're medium. I don't care. I close that up for now. If they are alive, they shouldn't be. The Verona Conference ends. Nice. I'm glad we're using Vori Krylov, the son. The son of a shepherd. I don't think it was a shepherd, but whatever. Help him out. There you go. You can probably win this one now. There you go. Let the trucks get up to Kolpashevo. Kolpashevo. Beat him up. Just beat the crap out of him. There you go. Something like that. I want to circle and destroy them. That's all I want. Good. 
Uh, you don't need to do that, guys. You can just go and hang out for that one. Oh, loot? Yes. Come on. That should be enough. Right? That should be enough. Nice. Hey, that division was overran. Good job. All right. Are they done? They should be done by now. Woo! Okay, so that's... Oh, that's so much better than what... Yeah, actually, I tried to record this once, and then they declared war me, so I had to reload my save earlier, but hey, Tomsk is good. We love Tomsk. Uh, scavenge for loot, of course. Uh, Krasnoyarsk. We love Krasnoyarsk. We didn't finish this last time, so we're going to have to finish it now. Ah, very good. Reunion and Krasnoyarsk. As the patient hangs over the ranks, the soldiers waiting, prepared for the beginning of the conquest. The king is no doubt who... On who shall feel our might first once his, his trusted co comrade, General Andreev, whose betrayal came at the most burdensome time of the king's attempts to contain and defeat the anarchist insurgency, the Siberian Black Army. All the hurt and humiliation his grace felt shall not be go unpunished, and the time come and across the Norsk will be shortly be reunified, and from there we can turn our attention to our numerous other opponents. The start of our actualization has just begun. King Rurik the second sees this only as the beginning of our reunification and the entirety of our great empire. Oh, you bet it is. Um, what do you want? Uh, factory output, recovery rate, resource efficiency again. That's not really worth doing, honestly. Uh, we could do work at the session, but nope. Mm, you know what? It's gonna hurt consumer goods, but more construction speed, please. Thank you. And I'm not doing it because I want to beat these guys up first. So we have to wait a few days, like three more days, and then we're just gonna beat the crap out of them. They have a loot, and I want their booty loot. Give me your booties. I just want to love you. Oh, I need more guns. Eh, artillery's not too bad, though. Yeah, we'll use that probably for infantry. Or resistance stuff. Yeah, yes, yes. Come on. Oh, wait. Do we not have enough command power? Oh, we don't have enough divisions here yet. Give us just a little bit more time. A little bit more time. Three. And besides, but, I mean, we're going to be hopefully winning here anyways. Just give us all this political power as much as possible. Okay, guys, where where are your divisions? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? We have enough divisions here. What do you mean? Are we one up here? What the heck? Why that one? Are you nuts? Just get, the, get, get this good over there. Go, 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 go. Don't waste time. And they pay tribute. Okay, then. Yay. Equipment. And let's go and do the focus. Very nice. Hmm. I don't know how bad it's going to be when they actually try to rebel. We're going to get 0.82, which is not great, but whatever. Oh. Oh, they're fighting that, those guys down there. Uh, Krasnodar's would be really nice this time of year, though. After that, the trial of An uh, General Andreev. Following a recent triumph and victory over across the north, so the leader uh, General Andreev now stands before the mercy of King Rurik, the man who had abandoned him at his lowest. Andreev's greatest, great betrayal had affected Rurik greatly, the drinking, smoking, and humiliation and the guilt. All these habits and feelings appear to have passed that after that fateful evening of his transformation. But the betrayal has never left, and now the king has been reunited with his bitter rival, he will finally put Andreev on trial for his treason. All that remains is to administer a suitable punishment, one severe enough that no one will ever think again to forsake his majesty ever again. Yeah, um, I hope we can win fast enough, because we're going to go straight to war with these guys, so, yeah, oh, hold and go, you should be able to win, yeah, look at that, that's pretty good, not too bad, wait, why are you moving around, dude, just get in the battle and just beat the crap out of them, nice, decrease consumer, yes, And we want to be able to core this stuff too, so that's good. Where's the capital? Oh, it's Krasnoyar. Oh, well, the capital of Krasnoyar is tribute Krasnoyarsk. Crashing through the forests of mountains surrounding the city, our men have overrun the city of Krasnoyarsk. And with it, we have taken the widely discussed Krasnoyarsk Railway Junction. The tall and mighty station building stretch over the urban space and dominated soldiers' view. It was a logistical fortress stuffed with bulky metal trains rusting on the platforms with the crucial junction of the Trans-Siberian Railway now under our control. We can now more vastly improve the logistical abilities in performing the Herculean task of reuniting Russia, piling heaps of ammo, caches, and supply crates onto the trains. We can deliver these resources to our front lines far more effectively as well as increase the speed in which communications can be delivered. Our our grasp over Krasnoyarsk Norris Railway Junction will stretch our influence across Siberia and is a step towards extending our power to reunite Russia under our watch, a boon to be sure. More, even more division speed, less supply consumption, more construction speed, plus 15%. That's OP, man. That ain't too bad. Alright, let's go ahead and integrate these guys as well. 
Let's get that one done next. Thank you. And Oath of Loyalty. Despite being on the losing side of our recent conflict, several officers that used to serve General Andreev have arrived at His Majesty's Court over the past few weeks. His Highness has made it clear that he is willing to show more mercy to them than he did with a treacherous general. As such, the Tsar has commanded that the new army immediately set about integrating these new generals into our army. The sooner the better. After these talented new officers have been combined with their own, we will certainly be much more prepared for the inevitable conflicts of the future. The traitor general, Nick Nikolai Andreev, was dragged in the King Rut's throne room and forced to the, his knees before the king. He was bruised and bloody, and the once charismatic general now was quiet, his air staring at some unknown point of interest on the floor. Andrei was a man who deserted King Rook at his lowest points. The smoking, the drinking, the humiliation, and the guilt all stemmed from Andrei's betrayal. While the king had since risen from this nadir, Andrei's betrayal still angered his king and his majesty. Andrei was formally charged with a long list of crimes, and Andrei confessed to these crimes after some coercion by the royal guard. It was now time for King Rook to determine Andrei's sentence. Either exile or execution would Rook be like Vladimir the Great, or who slew his own brother for his treachery? Or would he set a more merciful example and let Andrei live in his foreign lands? Could King Rook forgive this traitor so easily? Nikolai Andrei's fate will rest in King Rook's hands, and King Rook's hands alone. She'll be expelled from the realm upon the pathing of death if he ever returns. Nick Andrei was sentenced to death for the most vile of crimes treason um now it depends on really what character we chose if we chose yuri we'd probably just be like exile him but since we chose lydia and she's more you know a woman we want to be with and she's you know the daughter of the king and she's cool and all and she has her own shield maidens i think it makes more sense that we just condemn him to death which is the route we're gonna go with ah yes i really how ba wonder how bad the revolt can get Hmm. This is, this is just not worth it. Let's do this one. Oh, Hitler's dead. Goodbye, Hitler. Oh, 20% more land out attack. Yes, please sign us up. How much artillery do we have? Not enough. We have enough guns, though. That's pretty nice. We've got up to two. We want way more artillery. And I want to make 40 combo with divisions early on. We don't have enough factories yet. Not enough factories. <laughs> And please integrate Tomsk faster. Please, 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 please. I want those factories. I want that uh, population, too. Where is it? 881,000. Wow, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of dudes. Oh, and now we have the German Civil War, my friends. Half a billion in GDP. Not bad, but... Who cares about the Germans? A king for cast Neuersk, shall we? Now that the traitor's general Andreev is dealt with and his generals have been integrated, we should begin to work on bringing the rest of the Krasnoyarsk under the rule of the Tsar. All the ministers are to be replaced, new flags are being brought in, the image of and General Andreev shall vanish from the streets of Krasnoyarsk. After we've imposed Rook's authority over his new subjects, our position in the region will be far stronger. The state will soon be ready to remove the remaining opponents of his grace that skulk around us. It is now seeming that it is only a matter of time before his majesty, oopsie, his majesty will rule over all of our enemies. Nice. Slightly decreased scoring times. Oaths of loyalty, my friends. Alexandra uh, Sambusenko couldn't help but feel a little nervous that the royal guard let her and several other former generals of Krasnoyarsk through the palace. While they had all surrendered somewhat peacefully and pledged their allegiance to King Rurik, he still demanded they do so in person. She wondered if the king continued to hold a grudge against them for siding with Andreev. The doors to the throne room opened, and there he sat. King Rurik II, formerly known as General Nikolai Krylov. The Krasnoyarsk generals kneeled before the king, who rose and grabbed a sword from the second dignitary. He stood before Samosenko, his face difficult to read. Alexandra Samosenko, if you wish to serve King Rurik II, King of the Rus, then you prove your loyalty and humility, stated the king. Evidently referring to the boot he presented before her face, it felt humiliating having to kiss a man's boot, but that was likely the point of the whole act, one, one final test of loyalty. Alexandra Samusenko, please rise to your feet, said King Rook, and Alexandra Samusenko did as he commanded. He placed the sword upon her right shoulder and then the left and withdrew the blade. General Alexandra Samusenko, you may now serve this kingdom with pride and valor. Samusenko was back into the side of the throne room as another Krasnoyarsk general stepped forward, and the same procedure repeated. That whole ceremony had been quite tense, and she hadn't realized she had been holding her breath throughout the ceremony. Samusenko sighed. Kamarovo was certainly a different beast compared to the Krasnoyarsk. She just hoped she could adapt. The king welcomes your service. Ah, amnesty for service. Sometimes that's just the best thing we can do. An offer to Arosha. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, which is auto going to bypass. And the power of myth, please go right ahead if you'd like to re read about it. Actually, we can't do this one yet, because we don't own uh, Gorno Altaisk. Which is fine. Strike down the remnant. And the revolt. My goodness, this part is always a little... Ooh, we can go to war with them. Um, I guess we'll probably do these guys next then. Oh! Oh, look at that! Jesus! 
Okay, so I thought Novos of Beards could actually win, but no, the People's Revolutionary Council under Valevsky. Val. Uh, Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky has won. Jesus Christ. What the heck happened to them? I thought Novos of Beards was supposed to be this, one of the strongest people. Um, how strong? How many divisions do they have? 8 to 10. 6 to 10. Uh, manpower is 0. Uh, let's go and raid them. I'm going to raid their booties. Good. And they have no manpower, so that's good. Kyle Donut seizes Crimea. I love it. I hope you're enjoying this video, because I'll be honest, like, playing a, a thing of TNO every day, just, I don't know, it just, it's one of the things I look forward to every day. It's a lot of fun. It's probably one of my favorite mods. A lot of fun. I really look forward to it. Oh, boy. I, probably too much, but that's all right. Goodbye, South Africa. Have fun. Scams for loot. You bet. Begin to raid them. You better give in. Okay. Well, I think we're winning. Are you winning, son? Yes, we are. Hopefully, we'll keep it this way, too. And we've integrated Tomsk. Look at that manpower. The successful raid. If you like it, it'll be that. Please go right ahead. The middle of coup in Norway. Thank you. Seize all we can use. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Agricultural methods. Yes, please. Because everything else is going up. Except for research facilities, which we should probably do next. And... A power of myth. Sick Semper Tyrannus. Oh. Oh, so that one did complete. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. King Rurik II is not the king that they expected, but the king was needed. Such as the opening of the king's speech in the Great Square of Krasnoyarsk. Rurik looks face to face, sees a familiar closed off look with eyes like bared doors from every Russian face that he turns to him. Rurik sees this and speaks nonetheless. Andrea was of the military, sworn to defend the people of this land, Rurik says as solemnly, going on in solemn conviction, yet the military turned on the people once the Germans bested them. The president general was a tyrant with no legitimacy and no doubt did terrible things. The people listened with cautious eyes and the and the bar seemed to lift somewhat as the king assures them that they are in better hands now, that the king, the Tsar, will bring peace and prosperity to Russia with all his people in harmony. While there are murmurs here and there that dissent, Rurik simply speaks with plain sincerity. The unlikely looking king on his dice speaks, speaking to the crowd gets much right, but much wrong, yet the sincerity bleeds through nonetheless. The people may in fact be in good hands. You have labored under tyrant, says the king, and the people, people murmur at that. But we still feed and clothe you, and we will, and we will aid the needy. And the people murmurs turn cautiously hopeful. Tyrants are a matter of perception, and we will strike down the remnant. The king's attention has not been turned to the pe people's revolutionary council and the relic of the Red Army that remains under its control. In order to obtain all control of all of central Siberia, it is crucial that we take out the PRC. Their army has proven to be formidable and possess a great threat to survival. Their troops seasoned from the war with Meng Zheng are unlikely to be a walkover. Nonetheless, our disciplined and devoted men stand ready to undertake some of the greatest challenges the kingdom has faced so far. And I do apologize if I'm speaking fast. I'm just very excited to play this, so... Treasure, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Ah, political power to whip the workers. Oh, I can't wait. Mm. I see. Eh, why not? Where are we currently at? Minus 67% consumer goods. Construction speed so good. Cap, output, e efficiency gain, growth kind of sucks, but who cares a crap at minus 60%? Oh my gosh, we already have 20. Holy cow. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Oh, uh, love it. Let me go. And after that, adaptive tactics. Now that the old system has collapsed, it's time to build up the new order. The strongest part of the old people's revolutionary council was the Red Army and the strategies and skill that its officers and soldiers employed. The remnant of the Red Army has already proved its effectiveness, especially in its recent war with Meng Zhang. His Excellency has suggested that our army should set about utilizing these tactics for our own cause for our future battles. With the methods of the Red Army and the wisdom of Rurik II, we will prevail. Let's go, boys. Oh, were we raiding them? We must have been raiding them or something. The Kuznets Basin lost. Wait. Oh, if you like to rebuild that, please go right ahead. Oh, we lost. Oh, okay. You guys. Oh, they have. Oh, crap. They have that down there, huh? Oh, that's really not good. That is really not good. Go back and get Komarovo. I forgot that these guys actually had helicopters. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take you guys. You go down there. Go to there. Go over there. Uh, Yeah, we got to get a Tanda Tuba. That's all right. Wow, look at our uh, GDP. Not bad. We capture the basin gun. Good. 
Force the attack. Force him to die. Force him, force him, force him, force him, force him. Which is not good for us sometimes to do that. But, you know, whatever. I don't really care right now. Algerian War. Nice. Find those helicopters and kill them off. Kill every single one, last one of these off. They're, those are actually extremely dangerous. If we let them live, that is not good. Oh, capture the Novos Abirsk Air Plant. Cap uh, air Plant. Uh, aircraft plant. The recent fall of Nova Sibirsk and the retreat of the enemy forces across the frontiers of the battlefield has left us in total control of the now idle Nova Sibirsk aircraft plant. Towering and dormant, the factory was constructed before the Great Patriotic War and has manufactured vehicles capable of flight for administrators ever since. Now with the planet in our control, we will soon have access to a fresh arsenal of aircraft fit for any purpose for our armies. Motor engines, roar, and squadrons of planes may fly in the Siberian skies bearing our insignia. To first dominate the plains and wastes of central Siberia by land, we must tame the wild airs of our broken Russia. With this plant, this future may be ours for centuries to come to the skies. Awesome, awesome, awesome. King uh, Prince Yuri Krylov, you have anything for us? Winter's expert? Eh, why not? That might help us out a little bit, right? We've lost how many thousand men? Doesn't matter. We're going to hopefully do well anyways. Less than a thousand. Not bad. Actually, really not a bad. Not bad. Oh, they actually have a horse division, huh? Oh, we beat up the helis. Good, good, good. What is going on here? Alright, you guys hold. Stop being so dumb. Uh, you guys go here. Yeah, and do that. Take those guys out. That'd be good. But they have no manpower, so, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much, hopefully. Okay, these tanks. Come on, man. Come on. Just die. Good, and then finish these guys off. Just help kill them off. Good, 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 good. Alright, and then you guys get down here and go down there to cut all these guys off, which would be good. Why is it lag so hard now? 1964, happy 1964, Welsh Revolution. That's good. These divisions are hopefully going to be dying soon. Artillery barrage will be very nice. Get some more ground support. Very, very good. Helicopters go bye-bye. Hold for now. Beat them up. And keep going. Put the pressure on them. The nurse, Anastasia Abdulova, was a busy woman. Papers needed filing, patients needed checking on, and doctors needed assistance. She had no time for the crowd of important-looking politicians currently flooding the hallway, inhibiting the function of the otherwise perfectly efficient hospital, which had been completed and opened scarcely a week ago. Excuse me, she stated, shuffling through the dense crowd, elbowing several nobles. She gave a vague glance at her with mild annoyance and continued the conversations, remaining stuck in place. Excuse me, she shouted. All eyes turned towards her, or wide with surprise. They slowly shuffled to the sides of the hall and cleared a path for her. Thank you, Anastasia huffed before beginning a brisk walk. A hand reached out through the mass of expensive clothing and a haze of perfume and grasped Anastasia's arm, holding her firm. Anastasia, is that you? Princess Lydia's head attached to the body attached to the hand, which grabbed the gripped the nurse's arm, poked out. Her face was uncharacteristically astonished and friendly. What? What are you doing here? Lydia, Anastasia stuttered. I mean, Princess. She quickly corrected. She curtsied and assumed a respectful stance with her hands folded and head bowed. I'm a nurse at this hospital, Princess. Please forgive me for my politeness. I mean, no offense. Uh, uh huh. Lydia looked at her hands, still stuck to Anastasia's arm. She let go and awkwardly returned her arm to her side. I didn't expect you to see her. How are you? How is Alexei? I'm doing well. Alexei died two years ago, but her daughter, uh, Anastasia, blushed in embarrassment. Lydia has grown up to be a strong little girl. That's good to hear, Anastasia. Lydia's uh, face grew serious. It's been good to see you. She gestured around the, at the hospital. Sometimes I forget where I came from. It's been good to see you as well, Princess. Anastasia curtsied again and continued on her way. Lydia's gaze followed her in the future that could have been. A warrior with the heart of a healer. Cool. Kill all these people off first, and then we're going to just really focus over here. I don't even care that we're losing the battle. I really don't. The main goal is to just beat the crap out of these other divisions, especially the helicopters, as well as the cavalry divisions, because I don't want to fight these people, these fast divisions. Go and do that, because we can do that, and then... There you go. Beat them up, beat the, beat the crap out of them. Just kill them off. Kill every single one of these pieces of garbage off. Good, 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 good. They lost. We've lost three thousand. They've lost twenty thousand. Not bad, my friends. Good, good, good. They've won. They have five divisions left, which is pretty nice. Where are you going? Oh, that's actually fine with me. Keep going. Keep going. I think raid, raid these guys at least once more. That'd be kind of nice. Come on. They're out of manpower anyway, so. 
Any divisions that they have can't reinforce, which is good. Five divisions max. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Where are we currently at with this? Oh, there goes Himmler. Minus 72% consumer goods. My goodness. Beautiful. Oh, you guys are getting attacked, huh? Do we have any extra resources here? Anti-tank, artillery, guns. Motorized is not bad either. Oh, I thought that was us. Iberia gained control. Not bad. Force him to die. Force him, force him, force him. Go, 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 go. Where's the motorized? It's up here. Okay, that's good. Uh, go straight for Altai. Altai. Oh, they're doing a border raid, maybe? Maybe. That vision, nice. Let's grab some more gun stuff. More defense, more soft stack. Elected president of France, alright. Uh, let's cut him off first and come back up here. That'd be okay. Oh, wait, are they at war with... Oh, they're at war with them. Okay, scavenge relief then. Nice. Very nice. Well, that should be it, right? We... Oh, come on. I mean, we've lost 5,000 versus 45,000, so... Or really 40,000, I guess. It's fine, whatever. Things happen. Keep them in place so, we so they can't move. Oh, we got it. Done dust. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, my friends. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And going to integrate... Ooh, we got enough PP for that. Nice, awesome. Great. Oh, Presidium. Oh, maybe we can raid those guys, too. Well, let's do the next focus, shall we? Adapt their tactics. Cool. That two 33% research bonus for land auction. Nice. I think we're ready to read this, so if you'd like to read this again, go again, please go right ahead. And then we're going to go ahead and do End the Revolt. Our sights are now to be set to the king's greatest and oldest enemy, the Siberian Black Army. The anarchist insurgency, which has caused substantial embarrassment to his grace over the past two years because of his defeat shortly before being abandoned by General Adriv. Preparations are to be made by the army before they are to re-enter the region. They were forced to retreat just a few years ago, but our strength has since then grown greatly. The king has keenly awaited the moment and will be glad to see the end of the Black Army's existence. Their revolt has gone on for too long, and we shall strive to put them down once and for all. And here we are, my friends, April 9th. 1964, and as you can see at the top of the screen here, someone wants to have a little bit of a fun time with us, and now we're not quite ready for the war, just because, well, the Siberian Black Army wants to go to war with us, we literally have a day left before they go to war with us, actually, how's their legacy Siberian plan? Not great compared to ours, but, so I wanted to do the raid against these guys, in which, well, we still have this, like, where is it? Ah, right here. We have 26 days to do this, so they're going to go to war with us, and hopefully we do okay. My goal, though, is to help, you know, just beat these guys up as much as possible. The next focus we can do is end the, the revolt, but they're going to go to war with us anyway, so if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Re rein, retain the councils, empty the arsenals. Well, I can retain the councils first. In the wake of our recent victory, or what will be our victory, over the Siberian Black Army, the king must now concentrate on how he should rule over this newly annexed territory. The workers' councils, left over from the rule of the Siberian Black Army, has continued to run the region after its surrender, and the king sees little reason to remove them. Allowing such organizations to continue to run would be bizarre for any normal monarchy. The rule of Rurik II will only continue to be anything but a normal monarchy, though. And so we will maintain the workers' councils in the interest of equality and the unity of all the loyal subjects of King Rurik. Let's let them come in, and let's get rid of some of these uh, evil doers. we will say, as their soldiers desperately try to get to the front lines, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And you know what? Even if we can't win against them immediately, just keep going. Riding on, the cavalry officer looked on with the states as the work had soldiers drilled on the vast open plains below as a tuvin. The officer had, for many years, fought with the People's Revolutionary Council, but now found himself in a strange land, working to train the troops in the mobile warfare. <clears throat> the lessons had not took, or at least they had not yet. His experience with the Council's formations in the war with Meng Jiang had imparted him both with direct practical experience of the use of cavalry and other mobile fortifications, or in formations, and with the challenges and opportunities offered by their use. He had brought this knowledge with him, but prog progress has been very slow. That was not to say he had to admit to himself grudgingly that there had been no progress at all. Many of the junior officers, commissioned and otherwise, were eager to implement his teachings, and were stymied only by the lack of transport and communication equipment. And that equipment was arriving in greater quantity, and he was sure that with a few more weeks or months of intensive exercises and drill, along with the access to the needed equipment and infrastructure, he could possibly impart his teachings and thereby improve the combat capabilities of King Rurik's armies manyfold in the opening open field actions. He just needed time. And he noted with his size, he watched a squadron ride in the opposite direction to that ordered. 
he needed patience as well. Time and patience indeed. And we'll take a look at here. So, right now we don't have enough manpower equipment. We need more towed artillery, which I don't know why. I I took up military police, or took off recon for these guys, but I'm not using these guys. What's wrong with me? Don't answer that question, please. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just forgetful. Very cool. Nice. So now we should have no issue except a lot more infantry equipment. Uh, yeah, that saves us a little bit more artillery, which is very, very nice. Uh, but I, the reason I keep attacking these guys is just because they literally have no more manpower. So, yeah, that's beautiful. We love it. So the more damage you do right now, the, the better we can do later on. Just kill these guys off, please. Just just go. Um, actually, if you guys could go up there, that'd be great. So we can circle that militia division and kill it off. Have a good time. You know, if we're not having a good time, what's the point of doing things, right? Uh, and before you get encircled yourself, there you go. Head on up there. You guys are going to go up around to go to Konsk and go right there. Good luck, guys. Good luck. We don't need much luck. And I've already set up a lot of things that I want to build around here, so we're going to have a good old time. And oh, look at that. More loot. I love the loot. Hmm. Workers. We should, we should really do research facilities at this point, so. And we're going to need to save some political power, too, for more coring. Even though I would really love to whip the workers, but, you know, maybe that's just me. And we have them. Very nice. No problem. No problem. And now, maybe we can go to Irkutsk and raid their little booties. Let's see. Oh, I zoomed out a little bit too Wow, we've done a great job so far. Camera Robo is not that difficult. At least for now. It might have been a little bit, you know, depending on your situation, but I love it. Now, we could reunify Russia. Yes, we can, but I don't want to do that yet. Because I, as much as I want another research slot, I don't want overextended administration yet. And I want to see how much more times we can, you know, do this. <laughs> and we'll get to the focus tree first. So, empty the ar armories. During our assimilation of the land controlled by the Black Siberian Black Army, several stockpiles of weapons have been found across the region. These arms shall be seized immediately in order to prevent any risk of further tension with the workers' councils or the remnants of the Black Army. Such armaments will be better suited in the hands of our brave soldiers, already emboldened by a recent victory against our old enemy. The additional guns will help our fuel momentum, our military fuel, our military momentum. Yet another significant step has been taken towards our inevitable domination of the region. Hey, look! Divisions! We love them! Alright, so everyone's gotta be the same. I love the shield maidens. Yeah, these mamas are gonna do a great job for us, but they have to be standardized as well. And it's time that we throw on some more artillery. There you go. Very good. And I will throw on tanks on here eventually, but not yet. Today's not that day. Eventually, though. Mm, there you go. More guns, because those are probably super important. That's important. That's important. We got plenty of trucks. Main battle tanks are coming along. Everything's coming along. I mean, I'm loving this. Camarovo. That's a lot of fun. I'll be honest. It's a lot of fun so far. Oh, we can't create an army. That sucks. That's all right, though. Empty the armories, and then the king's speech? Oh, yes. A monarch may put on airs in his castle and play at war with miniatures, but if he is unable to lead his men on the battlefield, he is merely a mascot with the illusion of grandeur. His subjects rarely rely on his strength and wisdom for guidance in trying times, and nowhere are times more trying than the shattered statelets of Russia. In short, the king must lead. His Majesty, Rurik II, is already preparing a speech in order to bolster the flagging spirits of our soldiers. No one embodies the values of strength, wisdom, and bravery more than he does, and with their long months seeing only the worst of humanity, they would do well against... Do well seeing and hearing its best. Oh, absolutely. I wonder if we can keep raiding more. Oh, yes. I need more PP. Because right now, we're not, we are not. We don't have enough. Like, minus 80% consumer goods is not enough. But minutes of the Brask Communal Council. At 12 o'clock, Administrator Anto Anatoly Belozerov convenes weekly meeting to dispense his information regarding the king's new edicts. 1300. Farmer... Na oh, 1200. 1300. Farmer Natalia... Antonova inquires about tax policy in relation to her husband's crops. In doing so, she refers to Administrator Belozerov as Companion Belozerov. 1300. Administrator Belozerov corrects Natalia regarding the use of subversive terminology and proper royal titles. 1301. Deputy Mikhail Belinko interrupts Administrator Belozerov regarding the use of terms companion and punching the administrator for censorship of his subjects and bad word tyranny. 1305. Administrator Belozerov has Deputy Belinko removed from his premises and his title stripped. 1310. Deputy Mikhail Belinko's removal causes significant discord amongst the crowd. Vitaly Orlov begins a shock questioning the council's authority to govern if it intends to control our mouths. 1315. Administrator Belozorov directs Deputy Lazar Vinogradov to remove Vitaly Orlov for disorderly conduct. 1400. Following a heated standoff, Deputy Lazar Ki Vinogradov is struck by Yegor Nikitin. Deputy Vinogradov defends himself in striking Natalia Anatova in the process of 1403. King's Guard officers restore order the frenzied request of Administrator Belozorov, 1503. Anatolia Anatolov, Vasily Orl Orlov, uh, oh, 
Natalia Anatova Vasily Orlov, Yegor Nikitin, Deputy Lazar Vinogradov, Representative Luka Kolevev, Kovalev, Representative Yekartina Soronika, and Representative Alexander Nikolaev vacate the premises of 1510. Administrator Belozarov adjourns the council due to an absence of representatives. It's a strange lot, these anarchists. But at least there is some sort of order here. Bunch of weirdos. But you know what? They're our weirdos. My goal is 100. Minus 100% consumer goods. We must have more. It is not enough. Never enough. And we'll do the King's Speech, because we love it. So what do we actually get here? I didn't actually read what we get. Oh, look some good stuff. Nice. Very nice. The King's Speech, my friends, the King's Railways. Transportation infrastructure makes up the veins and arteries of the nation. And when they are severed, all it can do is bleed to death. Its distant un reaches unable to be, to be sustained. Even the victors of a conflict are in danger of coming to this sort of collapse if they do not rapidly rebuild. His Majesty, the one who channels all the creative force of the people, must respond to this waiting crisis. Streets and railroads will be restored and more relieving or reliving the great infrastructure projects of the old Tsars. His lands will be prosperous and connected more firmly than ever. We can build the world for ourselves as long as he demands it. Oh, absolutely. Ab so positively, literally. More industry, finally? Yes, please. More max factories in the state? Yes, please. Research is good. I don't think we'll... Actually, we will be in a war eventually, so let's keep going with our land auction for now, at least a little bit. I think that'd be quite bueno. Oh, and we're going to scan for loot. Please, can I just beat some people up? Who are you? Chernyshevsky. Oh. The worker discontent is medium. Does it look like I care right now? I've been recommended to keep the whip at hand at all times. Crack, crack. The King's Speech, my friends. Uh, Tsar Rurik strode across the stage with all the finesse and authority that his position commanded, his fur-lined coat fluttering in the breeze. The microphone was set up and stitched and swished on. The speakers scattered across the parade grounds were silent, save the occasional faint whooshing as the wind blew over it. Turning to face the assembled soldiers, he did not wait before launching into a speech. Subjects, loyal men, fellow Russians. His voice boomed over the speakers. T the time for which you have trained upon, you have trained is upon you. Your homeland lies sundered, divided between a hundred bandit princes. They desecrate the corpse of Mother Russia. They cheer as they rape her body. Smile. <clears throat> My apologies about this. Smile as they bathe in her blood and laugh as they feast upon her children, and they dare to do it while you watch. But... Watch we shall not. The soldiers were listening intently to works every word, a thousand eyes boring into him. You, we, you shall not stand by. You shall take up the sword once held by your forefathers. You shall strike the phobia for you, as we struck the Tartar, the Mongol, the Cossack, and the German once before. You shall pry those who defile the motherland out of their lairs and cast them into the fire. And this shall come a day, God willing. When your valor and sacrifice unite, Mother Russia once more, Ura. The soldiers threw their fists into the air, mimicking their sars cry, Ura, 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 Ura. Ad nauseum, the Russian bearer at last leaves its den. Oh, look, divisions. Yes. Very good. Very good. Has no one else unified this area yet? Jeez. Y'all are so slow. <laughs> oh, boy. Consumer goods. Decrease. Oh, that's 7.5%. That's not bad. Oh, Ordaz. Hello, Ordaz. Let's see. I see. Consumer goods factories. Construction speed. Lose a little bit more stability. Increase risk, worker discontent a little bit. There you go. More military factories? Wow. Holy crud. Um. Wow, we're looking not too bad, really. Uh, I guess for now, we, I love cast, so we'll do some of that first. Throw more on here, and then throw more on here. Uh, do that, and then do that, maybe. Uh, artillery is going to be super, 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 extremely important, so. Wait, what does this say? The Royal Court? Wait, what is this? Form the great... Oh, yeah. Disable her decisions. That's fine. Cool. The R King's Railway. The Royal Governance. Our territory at this stage is great, and King Rurik, for all of his grace, is but one man. The extent of his realm was too great to be supervised entirely from a seat in Camarovo. The time has come to delegate helpers. Uh, the eyes and ears of his majesty in a newly conquered land. The establishment of royal governance will vastly streamline the process of ruling. Naturally, the officer class are the best candidates for these new positions. They fought to add them into the kingdom, they know the land, and they have respect for the people and the soldiers. For their efforts, they can expect handsome rewards, and the honors of royalty in the form of official titles. Very good. And we've pretty much integrated everybody. Look at that manpower. My goodness. Gods of the North, hello, Devon Mandy to Siberia. Can I beat you up? Please, let me beat you senseless with mo our monarchism. Not bad. Agriculture is going up quite a bit. 
Property rate, everything's going up. I love it, except for nuclear stockpile, but that is okay with us. Let me beat you with monarchism. Return of the king. Oh, good. Oh, let's see what actually. Silence of Hawks. Nova Sabirsk. Nice. Let's see what happens next. And if you like to read about this, please go right ahead, as well as this one. But lessons from Novgorod, the Iron Crown. I think we gotta do the Iron Crown one. So if you like to read about the lessons from Novgorod, please go right ahead. But in order to maintain order in the newly conquered territories that once belonged to the Central Siberian Republic, His Majesty has decided that he will appoint his daughter, Princess Lydia, to govern the region. Princess Lydia has devised a broad plan to essentially keep the region under control with an ironclad fist. The bureaucracy of the previous administration will be removed, and in its place, the princess hopes to create a new set of laws aimed at suppressing dissent under her administration. Peace and stability will all be but assured, and those who defy the king's authority would find themselves squashed under the bootheel of our police forces. Beautiful. Great. Just as it should be. Consumer goods. Uh, I want more construction speed. I do. Um, there we go. I want more construction speed, but... Minus... Na have, we, have you seen a nation with minus 95% consumer goods? I hope this doesn't get reworked in the future, even though this, uh, when you have to fight against work and he does something like this, it's it's god-awful. Or anyone that has the legacy of Siber uh, the Siberian plan. Man, oh my goodness, it's so good. The people's will. The breadbasket of Siberia, base war support. Oh, agriculture, we gotta go with that one. The plains of Barnal are some of the most fertile grounds in all of Siberia and have long existed as a sinews of a critically important agricultural hub. With these areas finally under the king's protection, we could begin to utilize them for our own benefit. Not only can we make improvements of our own to increase output, but could also examine the layout of the vast farmlands to see if we can apply them in agricultural regions throughout the entire realm. With a little hard work, we will be able to ensure that at last the people of His Majesty's realm will no longer go hungry, and their soldiers can fight on a full stomach for once. These advantages alone will place our young principal to he head and shoulders above the rest of the warlord statelets. Very true. Very, very true. Anything yet? Nope. Okay, then. How about over here? Consumer goods, consumer goods, consumer goods. You know, I'm going to sacrifice it just a little bit. I want more construction speed. Because while consumer goods are great now, more Construction speed 0.45, it's not enough. It's never enough. Build. Build. And when you're done, build some more. Beautiful, my friends. And the She Wolf of Tomsk. Princess Lydia of Kemerovo was assigned the title of Governor of Tomsk, and she quickly solidified her rule over the city. She was quick to strip the former police of Tomsk of their weapons, replacing them with loyal Kemerovo soldiers, and any dissent was crushed with force. However, all rulers need allies to survive. Lydia, along a proponent of creation of a new aristocracy, found her allies and the industrialists of Tomsk. She stacked her administration with these wealthy industrialists, subsidizing their factories and businesses, and having them do don the same decorum as the rest of Kemerovo's royal court. Lydia's goal as governor was to make Tomsk a productive asset of King Gorok's realm so that he may better be able to unite Russia, as is his destiny. As part of making Tomsk a productive asset to the king, Lydia also funded infrastructure. She ensured that the roads were safe and well maintained, that factories were functioning at full capacity, and that the administration was loyal and well disciplined. She also funded hospitals, as a healthy populace was a productive populace, and the invasion of Tomsk had overwhelmed what remained of its previous health infrastructure. Lydia's rule of Tomsk would be characterized through her authoritarianism, but also her pragmatism. Long live Princess Lydia, the two cups of tea, though. Welcome, Mave Kuzmich. Sit, sit, Aurora out of the door and let my... my Heavy Shapshnikov into his office. They had taken them in different directions, one to the military in Tomsk, one to the throne in Kemerovo, but politics and warfare could not wear down the bonds of an old friendship. Well, thank you, Your Majesty, replied Shapshnikov, still clearly uncomfortable with the honorific. Rurik laughed nonsense, Matea, for you I am still Nikolai Ivanovich. He walked over to the samovar on an end table and grabbed the teapot atop it, filling two cups and adding cubes of precious pre-war sugar. The following hours were filled with laughter while reminiscing about old escapades, tears shed for a long old friends long gone, and sobering silence as they realized they had once ordered thousands of their men to fight each other. At least, Shapshnikov said as he sipped the, the last of his tea, there will be no more bloodshed between our men. You have brought peace to this region, Nikolai Ivanovich. We're excited, aye, but not elsewhere. There will still be more battles, and blood and death shall be left in their wake, such as the price of forge, reforging our homeland. Russia is desperate, Matave Kuzmich, and her people need something, someone, and whom they can place their trust. He smiled, wryly, at his old friend. And who better to follow than the ghosts of old Rurik, given life once again? The last of the tea grew cold, and Rurik dumped the drugs from his cup and into the fireplace as he stood up. So ends our conversation. It was good to talk to you, Matev Kuzmich. Likewise, your majesty. 
the people's will. The Silovici have been crushed. Their su long-suffering people owe their newfound freedom to King Rurik. His Majesty does not wish to let this good will go to waste, and Ori has plans to begin a large-scale propaganda campaign in the new territories to increase support and remind the people of Novosibirsk that the days of chafing under the corruption of the oligarchs are over. The liberty will be made to see that His Majesty fights with their best interests in mind, and hopefully this message will resonate all throughout Siberia. The corrupt and unworthy will not be safe so long as the armies of King Rurik are on the march. Amen. Scavenge for loot, and this is the last one we'll do this part. Uh, cool. And then, industrialization, industrial consolidation. With Sister Siberia firmly within the grasp of King Rurik and his armies, it is now as a tremendously powerful base to continue the reunification of Russia. The region has long been renowned for its extensive industrial centers, and was at one time the beating heart of Russia's once mighty industry. Now that they are within our hands, we can begin a large-scale effort to refurbish and modernize the factories to get the most out of their potential output. Many of the factories are now quite old by modern standards, and bringing them up to speed should be our top priority. Once we've reestablished Sister Siberia as an industrial heartland it once was, our realm will be the envy of our neighbors, and we will be able to produce armaments and munitions like never before to ensure our soldiers and are some of the most well equipped in all of Russia industrial expertise and equipment continue to go up nice and there's no point to do naval support as a Russian warlord so because as much as I love the Marines there's really no point to help them up for now nice the people's will my friends thy will be done oh this one gives us 10% more war support so very nice ah uh, very good. Look at that. Do we have any more things here? Ooh, consumer goods. Anybody? Consumer goods? Industrial capacity. I see. Well, all right. Fit medium. Sure, why not? More capacity. Growth is going down a little bit, but you know what? That's okay. The Grand Prince of Polte, Siberia. Victory, King Rurik II and his valiant troops have accomplished what was thought to be impossible, and Central Siberia has been united under the royal banner. A realm was no longer a minuscule state that barely able to keep the wilderness outside Kemrovo under control, but a proper and established government ready to take her cause to the glorious new heights. Therefore, it is no longer appropriate to call ourselves a Prince of Polte of Kemrovo when the king now rules over so much more. The king has laid forth plans to reform his state into a new entity, the Grand Prince of Polte of Siberia. Creating this new Prince of Polte will solidify our stance as the one legitimate authority in the long divided lands of Siberia and triumphantly proclaim to the world that Russia is finally on the road to reunification. A lot more stability, political power, slightly decreasing coring time. Nice, nice, nice. So I think the next one we'll wait for is more consumer goods because I want to get a minus 100%. So, the Novosibirsk trials as the prosecution lifted off a very exhaustive list of various ways he's and other several other Siloviks had violated Russia's most sacred traditions, Alexander Postrakin couldn't help but feel as though he had traveled several hundred years back in time. The judge as well as the rest of the prosecution were all dressed as though they were noblemen of the Kievan Rus. They spoke in a form of Russian that sounded rather antiquated to him and it all felt as though it were some kind of reenactment of a long past trial from deep within Russia's medieval history. Pokrishkin felt that the scene was so surreal that it could have been a chance this was all just an incredibly vivid dream. Unfortunately for the captive flying ace turned statesman, this was so, so no such illusion. Alexander uh, Pokrishkin, you are charged with countless infractions against the honor and dignity of the Rus. How do you plead? The Siberian falcon smiled wryly. If you are saying I'm guilty of attempting to trounce your silly little renaissance fair here, then I suppose you're right. Just get me out of here so I don't have to listen to this farcical nonsense any longer. I'd advise you to watch your words carefully, Snake, before you find you in contempt of court. We hereby find you guilty of all charges and sentence you. Exile? 20 years in prison. Um, prison sounds a lot better than ex... Uh, sounds worse than exile. Uh, let's see... I think exile is more punishing. Maybe prison. But if we have prison, then we have control over him. So we're going to go with prison. And Lydia is all about control. Being pragmatic and being uh, militaristic. So exile would be generous so he could do whatever he wants. But if he's in prison, we can do whatever we want to him. And I say that with a smile on my face. Hmm. Next technology. Done in quite a while. That's okay with us. 13 divisions. Not enough. Not enough. Uh, let's go and duplicate some of these guys. Oh, on the sober floor. Oh boy. Let's go and make these let's call these forties. Thank you. Nice forties. The conquest of Pokrish Pokrishkin's fact in Sibirsk has brought a great deal of resources to the kingdom, but with more resources come more problems. And wealth, of course. No better example of that is the case of Prince Yuri and the Princess Lydia, who have occupied the last slice session of the Sobor with an hours long debate on how the newly annexed factories of the Novosibirsk should be integrated into the royal economy. Esteemed members of the Sobor, I highly recommend that you reject my dear sister's proposal on counts of her actions are killing the loyal working men of Russia. I, 
Lydia didn't even wait for Yuri to finish her sentence. I call upon the school board to reject my brother's proposal, for following it will kill our nation. We cannot afford to top our industry with red tape when we are surrounded by war. Better the men in the factories be a few kopecks short for a few years than for them to be slaves to bandits for the rest of their lives. That line really set Yuri off. A few kopecks? How dare you suggest that? It's mine. My programs will save lives while yours... As the siblings shouted at each other, the assemblyman of the school board, at least those who could be bothered to stay awake, quietly judged them and weighed their options at best. At last, the Tsar's thoroughly ex exhausted children returned to their seats and the voting began. It was narrow, but the Sobor ultimately swung in favor of labor reforms. Status quo. Here we go. Let's make these guys 40 combo with, because I... And whenever you play as a Russian warlord, and you're fighting another Russian warlord, especially near the end of the campaign, or even, like, getting to the super regional stage, like, you got to make sure you have 40 combo with infantry. Like, there's no joke about it. And we barely have enough for this, too, so... Give me all the infantry. Cut them down in half. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. Industrial Consolidation, the Grand Principal of Siberia. Oh, and we can do this again. Equipment, probably. Actually, what are we on for equipment? For, before we click on that, poverty rate needs to get better. Equipment, power tools. Oh, yeah, we got a long way to go for that. So, equipment, it is. Beautiful, my friends. The ugly truth, a bad day to be Polish? Probably. That's just the point, I can't raid these guys anymore. That sucks. Come on, I just want to get to 100%. All 100%. That's all I'm asking for. Infrastructure's nice and all. Gorky. I see. Consumer goods. Oh, we need to do that one next, so. And then there's another one we can do as well to get that more, so. Come on. We've hit it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Oh, boy. Now we got to deal with workers' strikes and such, but whatever. All right, so if that's the case, I'm going to go and defend, like, Kemerovo or something. Or Tomsk, Kemerovo, and Novosibirsk. Like, the three main cities here. United under the crown. The Grand Principal of Central Siberia has now been united under King Rurik II. Long may he reign. Formerly known as Major General Nikolai Krylov, the King Rurik had come to understand his destiny and overcame his failures. The Siberian Black Army had been subjugated, the anarchist experiment of failure. The traitor General Nikolai Andreev has been brought to justice and Krasnoyarsk reintegrated. Novo Siberia led by Alexander Poshushkin. The Siberian Falcon now served King Rurik in his conquest with its vast industry, population, and resources. The People's Revolutionary Council has been defeated, the socialist cause taking yet another blow. Tomsk, the last remnants of the Central Siberian Republic, now a loyal subject under the king. With all of Central Siberia now under united under the king of the Rus, King Rurik is now a powerful contender for uniting all of Russia, as unlikely as it may have seemed upon once a time. King Rurik's eccentric persona, beloved by the common people, is well now known across all of Russia, and even the international community. Who knows what the future holds for this glorious realm, for thou, now that it may very well hold the fate of all of Russia in its hands. Of course, King Rurik's dreams are not yet achieved, and now the contenders still threaten his majesty and his realm from both east and west, so the Grand Principality of Central Siberia is not yet safe. Many specters have called King Rurik mad and laughed at his dream of uniting Russia, but now King Rurik shall be the one laughing now, laughing from his grand and mighty throne. Long live the king, long live Russia, and right now. Before we go to the next stage... Oh! Oh, we can just start here. Okay. That's okay, then. Uh, we got to be ready for the Civil War, so the Kingdom of Contradictions. Once a long time ago. Russia was a land of valor and loyalty, but with ages came decadence and the people forget the roots. Fascism, communism, democracy. It's all the same. Wolves who would lure the Russian to the lair. The nation survives survival lies at its source, a mighty king kingdom led by just King Tsar Rural II and his internal majesty shall waste no time in healing the wounds of Siberia or Russia, starting here in Siberia itself. But Rurik II is understanding of his people's needs. He will not embrace decadence, but he will take the best of all worlds. Help the workers not because of revolution, but because out of benevolence. Maintain the old ways, but not corrupt them like the fascists. Give the people justice without compromising the rule of the Tsar. Some may find the style of rule erratic, irrational even, but they are blind to the future, which is the past, ignorant of tradition, which is perpetual. Hail Tsar Rurik II, monarch of all the Rus, Shiro Siberia, King of Kings. Now, we got, I want to get a guys over here first before I suck this uh let's keep doing that just because I don't want to hit get hit too hard by political power so here we go oh what can we do this mm. okay one more time uh let's do this too finally we shall become the great principality of central Siberia what a madman if you like to read about this please go right ahead look at that Minus 107%. We're only down by 0 0.02 for production efficiency growth. Oh my goodness. God, I love this campaign. But, a kingdom of contradictions, and we get a family feud. And look at that, 0.33 billion, not enough. 
Uh, this is good. Actually, do we have anything in here for land auction? Doctrine. Yes. Double 50% bonus. And then a double 50% bonus for air doctrine. So, one, two. Well, I want to keep doing some other stuff first before we keep going that way. So let's get some more max factories in a state, which would be very beneficial for us. Because we obviously don't have enough. Warlord recruitment is done and over. Sad. Spend cut. Spending is not going to be a problem with the amount of things that we can build. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. So now I'm a little worried about... Oh, we can close that one out. Uh, this discontent. When does that happen? Oh my goodness, look at all the stuff we got to do here. We need more pee, pee Is there any other way? We can't do any of this stuff. Okay. Uh, Monument to our victories. War support, new capital, new aristocracy. Yes, please. In these turbulent times, men elect to follow those with the biggest purse and gun. The good subject is hard to find, but harder to maintain. The prince of policy of Siberia is full of opportunists and men of low mor morals, but they are fodder. The Tsar's advisors, generals, and local leaders shall be rewarded for their loyalty with landed titles. The useful individuals of poor character will be given honorary, empty titles, and eventually marginalized until devoted men come along. Commanders will be given five tomes in the form of villages and camps so that they can muster custom forces for upcoming campaigns. Mayors and advisors shall receive large settlements to foster economic growth and development. Naturally, there will be those who decry the nobility as corrupt and archaic. What do they not understand, however, is that an aristocracy organizes the population in a unique way. While the rest of the Rus suffers from a lack of hierarchy, we will be planting the seeds for a better tomorrow. Cool. The coming storm. Uh-oh. Spend, 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 spend. And a frenzy pushed to reunify Russia and restore it to its rightful dignity. A whisper has grown. As the light has regained purchase, uh, so too has a shadow. Festering upon the inherent cruelty of our actions, it has waited for a moment to strike. Today it emerged from the dark, boldly declaring, I was, I am, I will be. Workers across central Siberian industrial zones have begun to amass of coordinated general strikes, citing continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepentant cruelty by bosses. It appears the drive to return civilization to the Russian waste has come with many drawbacks, and as the lofty dream of a united Russia becomes less alluring when one cannot feed his family or keep all of his limbs intact. Additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself seems to have become less valuable simply upon towards the eventual goal. Already work has grounded to a halt, demands are being made, and old scores are being settled. While some in our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers, it is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, especially considering the, ways precar the always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and show our workers some tangible piece of prosperity we promise, we must brace for the storm to come. Heroin. I'm not touching that. A family feud. As you can see, Father Domain now stretches from Tatarsk in west to Bratsk in the east. For the first time in several weeks, our forces have reported minimal current uh, resistance to our. Boris Krylov trailed off as he looked to his father. The king looked deeply in trouble as his eyes distant and cold. Rurik the second seemed to care little about the subject at hand. It was obvious his mind was focused on something else darker. Father, what troubles you? You've been too quiet lately. Today. Rurik the second's eyes snapped to his son. It's your siblings, Boris. What the heck am I supposed to do with them? Their disputes grow more venomous and destructive by the day, and I cannot bear to watch it any longer. Boris walked away from the map he had been presenting, and sighed as he took a seat next to his father. The old king sounded utterly defeated. I wish I could tell you. You know, I was never one for politics, father. Politics? You think this is about politics? Yuri and Lydia, my own flesh and blood, have become enemies, and I've done so little to stop them. What kind of father stands by while his children go to war? Rurik the second sounded as though he was on the verge of tears. Boris put a reassuring hand on his father's shoulders. You've done what you could, father, as much as it pains to see them fight. This may be the only way they can settle their differences. The king's eyes grew distant once more. Perhaps you're right, Boris. It's just they used to be so close. Trouble on the horizon. <sighs> Tearing the kingdom apart limb by limb, but maybe we'll grow stronger out of this in the end. I thought we were supposed to get political power there. Whatever. Hey, look, more divisions. Oh no, we've that D word. Debt. Oh no. But we're going to keep building up because we don't have enough consumer goods. The people expect negative 92% of a consumer number of civilian military factories to produce consumer goods. Hey, look, construction. And I'll read one more focus before we end the episode. That's a barely ahead of time. Let's grab this one. Nice. Oh, we got hit hard. Oh, boy, that's not feel good. But still minus 82%, so whatever. Caffeine flow, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. This happens every single campaign, so general strikes. Yeah, the eye wall. The severity of this general strike has expanded into entirely new dimensions. Following a lack of progress towards any kind of resolution and continuous violence, the workers have taken up arms. Raiding weapon stockpiles, looting old cellars, and outright stealing has become widespread as arms and ammo began to be passed among militants. Already, workers are organizing themselves into general defense committees. This is an extremely dangerous situation, and the specter of uprising hangs in the air. We must tread more carefully than we ever have before, while at the same time moving as quickly as possible to secure ourselves. If we do not act, this could be the end of all things. I want to get through the next focus first. A new capital? 
The capital of the nation is also its heart, just like old Moscow connected to all of Russia, Kemerovo is beginning to branch out in its infrastructure, and soon all roads may lead to it. However, the Zemsky Sobor has been considering relocating the capital to a more practical location, such as Novosibirsk. A central location could alleviate future logistical issues as well as inspire the people after all. Kemerovo is forced to be the seat of the Tsar because of necessity, but now we can afford the luxury of choice, my friends. And now, we shall go ahead and hire foreign instructors. Nope, it's poverty relief. That's more important than hiring foreign instructors, and we shall end this episode with vertical envelopment. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know in the comments. Have you ever had a nation with with a national spirit that gives you minus 107% consumer goods? Regardless, thanks for having a great day, and see you tomorrow.